2021 may go down as another pandemic year, but it was certainly a great year for movies, yet no one is really talking about it. 2021 picked up a huge film load that 2020 had left behind. I enjoyed so many movies that I bumped the usual top 10 movies list to the top 20, and I still didn't fit everything I wanted to talk about. I'll make a playlist of all my 2021 reviews that made it on this list and link it below and here in the video. Now before I start, like always, it shouldn't have to be said, but these are all my own opinions. Don't be a hater. It's not going to be the same as your list. Some movies I didn't get the chance to see, and some movies you may have liked, but honestly, I didn't love enough to put them on here. This list is chock full of movies that I thoroughly enjoyed, movies that made me wonder and truly think, some made me cry, and most filled me with happiness. These are my top 20 movies of 2021. A film that many people love and have in their top five of the year, Come On, Come On, was definitely a great movie, but it was not as perfect to me as it was to other people. The acting is stellar, the cinematography is great, the score is great, and the story is great. I had a good time watching this, and maybe a second watch would bump it higher. Nobody is a good-ass time. Smaller scale action, but more creative, good characters, dialogue, and boy, it is funny. Nobody is a movie I can't wait to watch over and over again. One of two documentaries I have on this list, Life of Crime is Raw and Powerful. A very stark look at the way addiction destroys lives. These people are so real, so lovable. You can't help but hope they do better for themselves and the families that love them. Be warned though, there are some incredibly shocking images in the latter one third of this film. Other than that, I believe it is a necessary watch. A film I wanted to watch twice before the year ended, but only saw it the one time. Pig was just another look at how incredible Nick Cage is as an actor. You come expecting blood and revenge, and you end up with a simple story about how isolating grief and heartbreak is. That third act is emotionally overwhelming and will leave you hungry for more. King Richard was such a shock to me because I expected it to win me over. I'm a sucker for sports dramas, but my god is it much more than that. This story just further supports the notion that the greatest, most full and beautiful stories are those that are rooted in real life. Will Smith gives the performance of a lifetime and the ensemble is not far behind. Inspirational and touching, do yourself the favor of falling in love with this film. When the trailer dropped for this last year, I anticipated it to be the best film I would see and sadly, it was not, but it is pretty damn incredible. Despite it being slow in some parts, this film serves everything it could offer with its chosen theme, and I hope more people give this a chance. In my opinion, Dev Patel is a fucking rock star. And what do you hope to gain? From facing all of this... That is why Knight does what he does. Are you ready? Simon Rex, you damn dirty dog, provocative, bitterly funny, and thought-provoking, Red Rocket is an American story, but it features a character that can be found in all corners of the world, and the themes are universal. Simon Rex is absolutely incredible in this. He brings a lot of charm and energy to this performance, aiding Sean Baker in bringing this wonderfully tragic character to life. He is charismatic, vibrant, unapologetic, and darn right terrible, but he is real, and much more than the one-dimensional label he's given. It's a must-see. I sadly have not seen this again because, like, it's four hours long. But wow, wow, did Zack Snyder hit this shit out of the park. Viscerally, emotionally, mentally, and cinematically impactful, flooded with comic book originality, never failing to honor its source material in an overall fulfilling fashion, Zack Snyder took everything we hated and turned it into gold, then gave us all some extra gold on top of our gold. His version of the Justice League should have never happened, and yet, we as fans won. 
This was so beautiful and humble and lovely to watch and it made me really happy and really sad. Childhood memories interwoven with behind the scenes of his movies leading up to his life now after he has battled throat cancer. Val Kilmer doesn't shy away from giving us his true self. That's what makes this documentary so phenomenal. It's real and in your face, just like him. I never expected this to be on my list, but because of my friend Lewis, I went to go see this in theaters and basically bawled my eyes out. There was no turning back. It's beautiful and the family dynamic is so relatable. I thought it dealt with fractured family relationships and trauma in a sensitive and beautiful way. Like I said in my review, it's not about castles and going on a huge magical journey. It's about family and the grounded approach to fixing the things you love the most. My most recent watch that made this list, The Harder They Fall is simply cool as fuck. From the color palette of the set to the characters, this cinematic masterpiece leaves very little room for criticism and more room for innovation when it comes to depicting African American cowboys on film. It is a Netflix film that deserves the praise and deserves the sequel it sets up. The MCU film that was almost entirely critically panned, Eternals was such a breath of fresh air in my opinion. To some it worked, to others it didn't. No matter what, it seems some refuse to look at superhero films simply as films. Once you do, you realize Eternals was more than good, it was great. The story didn't have to be, nor was it, huge. In fact, it was a story about love, platonic and romantic with the latter being the core of the film. I loved it so much that I saw it twice in theaters, which, believe it or not, is rare for me. Wes Anderson's most Wes Anderson film. I didn't love it when I first saw it in theaters, but as the weeks have gone by, I can't seem to get it out of my damn head. This is Anderson's most ambitious, beautiful, and interesting film yet. The use of color alone to indicate emotion in print stories and the way it became a movie magazine completely obsessed me. The throwback to new wave cinema done in a fresh way was incredible. It is simply put, beautiful. I will never get a line out of my head. You know by now, we have kidnapped your son. I absolutely loved The Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad is a great example of what you can achieve if you pick the right directors for the right projects and just let them work with unfiltered creativity. And if this is the kind of action, humor, and wit we can expect from the upcoming Peacemaker spin-off series, we're in very good hands. One of the most creative, original, and heartwarming films I've seen this year the Mitchells vs. The Machines triumphs over every single animated film that came out in 2021. It's such a joyful burst of personality and energy that not many animated films have. The Mitchells vs. The Machines is refreshing, inventive, and chaotic. Every character is perfect and every theme is perfectly rounded out. I love everything about this and it just feels like there's nothing wrong with it and it's very relatable. My life, my life. Fucking Dune, dude. I can't describe it. Watching this in theaters was mesmerizing. I felt like I saw the biggest movie ever when I watched this. And hearing the sound design and IMAX, the cinematography up close, the story being done right, Dune is just epic. I have seen this three times in theaters. Three. No Way Home wasn't everything I wanted it to be when I first saw it, but it turned out to be everything I needed from a Spider-Man movie. Not a minute goes to waste in this film. The writing is filled with action, comedy, and tragedy. Every character's chemistry is in sync. My favorite part has got to be the returning villains. Tom Holland's acting is the best we've seen from his career. It just accomplishes everything it set out to do, and then some. I just can't stop thinking about Willem Dafoe's performance. Talk about frightening. Ugh, I fucking love No Way Home. 
to some it may not seem like a film, but rather a comedy special, but it is clear that there is a story within this special. I have seen this the most out of all the films on this list, five times to be exact, once in theaters, and I don't plan on stopping. The fact that one man can exceed the majority of films that have millions of dollars pumped into them without even leaving his room is a remarkable feat. This film has shaken me to my core in its technical achievements, its storytelling, its humor, and also its tragedy. Bo Burnham is a fucking genius. I don't mean to simp hard for him, but come on, give this man the damn Oscar. Get your fucking hands up, get on out of your seats, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Get your fucking hands up, get on out of your seats, all eyes on me, all eyes on me. Are you feeling nervous? Are you having fun? It's almost over, it's just begun. Don't overthink this, look in my eye. Don't be scared, don't be shy. Come on in, the water's fine. We're going to go where everybody knows, everybody knows, everybody I saw once at the Savannah Film Festival, and it has not left my mind since. I was not excited for Spencer at all. I was a Kristen Stewart hater, and I just did not care to see it until I heard some buzz about it, I bought the tickets, and left the theater slapping myself for ever doubting her and the film. Kristen Stewart delivers a career-defining performance, and if she doesn't get the Oscar for her role as Diana, then it would be a travesty, and a massive oversight from everyone involved. It's a near-perfect film on so many levels, and an instant classic in my book. I'm honestly super shocked and impressed, cause holy fuck, this is a movie that reminded me why I love cinema and revitalized my inner cinephile. It reminded me of why, in a critical sense, some movies are worthy of a 5-star rating without thinking twice or needing a second viewing. In my humble opinion, it is a masterpiece. <laughs> They know everything. They don't. To go from praising Spencer and not even have it at number one, what could possibly go here? Yes, ladies and gents, it's licorice pizza. Some films are action-packed and fun. Some films are dramas with tear-jerking moments. Some films are terrifying and leave you on the edge of your seat. And some films just give you vibes. Licorice pizza is one such film. It's aimless, sweet, and just a really good time. We don't get films like this anymore. This film is like a perfect snapshot of all frustration and sexual tension and the laughter and all the special sudden memories from having a fucked up little relationship with someone you can't be with. Utterly delightful, captivating from the beginning scene, it never slows down. Not only is this a rapid paced movie, but I also love the imagery of running throughout the film. I didn't stop smiling the entire way through and writing this now, I can't help but smile. Because Licorice Pizza, without a doubt, is my favorite movie of 2021. And scene. I'm not gonna forget you. Just like you're not gonna forget me. Cross. Tune in every Friday for new movie videos. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment down below on the video.